Hello! So I'm going to try and show you how to take a rocket into orbit in the fantastic toy slash game slash entertainment Kerbal Space Program. So we're in the vehicle assembly building. First of all, we're going to basically put a parachute on the top because you want to bring this back. Then you need a decoupler underneath your capsule so that you can eject the rest of the spacecraft. And now we're going to build a rocket out of four fuel tanks. Now these are liquid fuel tanks and they're going to feed one single rocket at the bottom. Now the physics of the game will actually let this get into orbit on its own but it won't let it leave the launch pad because uh, it has to reach a certain minimum level of thrust. So what I'm going to do is strap on uh, six solid rocket boosters around the outside and I'm going to put these on um, radial decouplers which means that once we get fast enough and high enough, once they've burned out essentially, we'll be able to jettison these and travel the rest of the distance using just the fuel in this main rocket. Um, also what I'm going to do is uh, put these stability stabilizers on top because that really helps during the early launch. These, these things can generate a lot of torque and you can lose control. So you want to put a stabilizer on top of each. And then you want to reorder your launch, your staging, so that your your main engine, your liquid engine, fires at the same time as all the solid engines. Okay, so now we're going to go launch. And so I adjust my throttle a little, but uh, we're not going to need much throttle initially, but we want it to be firing. So we want to let this go up, just watch the fuel in these burn out, and when they're about to burn out, then we want to actually lift up the throttle to maximum on our main engine, because at that point, we're going to, it'll be the only thing supporting it in a few seconds. Be very careful, you want to jettison these things as soon as they burn around in a fuel, but not before, because otherwise they'll smash into your ship and destroy them. Now, at this point, we're flying straight up, we're using stability, automated stability control. We want to adjust the throttle so we don't overheat the engines. But now we want to turn off stability control and fly this thing manually. The stability control without a stabilizer isn't really great at keeping you going straight up. So I do this manually, very light touch in the keys is all that's needed, it's got a lot of inertia. And we're going to try and go straight up about 25 kilometers. Once we get above like 15, 20, then we're going to start moving all moving our rocket over, but not too soon. Really, the lower atmosphere is going to slow us down a lot, and we want to take the fastest route out of that. That means going straight up. So now we're starting to keel over just a little, but not much, no more than 10 degrees. This is going to be a slow progression as we get higher and higher in the atmosphere. We don't want to rush it. Let... I'm just still adjusting the trim a little. Now we're up to 200 meters per second. Starting to pick up some real speed now that we've dropped some of the fuel out of these tanks. This is the thing about this design, because we have four tanks, it gets lighter and lighter as the fuel runs down. And so the acceleration picks up. And the nice thing is that you don't actually need to drop any of these stages at all until you're ready to get back into the atmosphere. So now we're up a bit higher, we're starting to keel the thing all the way over. We want to make sure we have enough vertical speed that we get above about 40 kilometers. We're about 23 kilometers right now, and we're keeled over about 45 degrees. We're really trying to build that lateral speed, but we're still watching for our vertical. Now, 26 kilometers. At this point, we're just going to rely on the up upper momentum we already have, and we're just going to smoothly take the nose down right towards the horizon. I'm adjusting this uh, yaw manually using the A and D keys, and the W and S is just for to make sure I keep it on this line. But you want to be very, very light with these keys. It doesn't take a lot. If you overdo it, you know you're going to lose control, and you're going to, at the worst, you're going to uh, crash it. At least you're going to waste fuel. So now you can see that we're all, we're basically thrusting sideways, just to pick up horizontal speed. And we still have a bit of vertical speed that's now going to take us up past 40 kilometers. 
our goal speed is about 2200 meters per second that isn't going to get us into a complete uh, uh, perfect orbit but what it'll do is it'll let us pop up until we reach our maximum altitude or our apple key or apple G depending upon whether that term is stuck with you and then once our once we've got up to about 2200 we're going to trim back the thrust a bit we we don't once once we get above like 1900 we're really into uh fine tuning and you don't need maximum thrust anymore you can really slow down so now just feathering that off letting the speed get to about 2200 and i've cut the thrust completely now i'm gonna wait and wh while i'm going up we're going to wait for the maximum altitude in the orbit. Now at that point we'll basically be going sideways and we want to match the speed of our orbit, the speed of our craft, to the ideal speed for the orbit for that altitude. Now you may not be an astrophysicist like me but uh, you can, there's somebody out there that's put together a really nice table of speeds. Just uh, go there and look at it. You'll see that you need about 5 meters per second difference for every 5 kilometers in altitude. It isn't isn't a big... Uh, it's pretty sensitive. But yeah, once I reach Apogee here, I'll be getting... I'll be about 50 kilometers up, and the table's telling me that I need to be going about 2330 meters per second to be in a circular orbit. So that's what I'm going to go for, but... I get a long wait until I get up to the altitude I need. You can see that those, um, the altitude meter is still going up bit by bit, slowly and slowly. Now, you just want to stress that, that you want to accelerate at this point because you're, the lowest point in your orbit potentially is still inside the atmosphere of the planet. And if that's the case, then you're going to if you don't thrust, you'll come back around, graze the atmosphere, and land back in. So this is called a circularizing maneuver. We're basically going to give it just enough thrust to make the orbit circular. And again, you want to wait for the right time. If you fire the rockets at the highest point of the orbit, you're going to get the most efficient use for the fuel that you have left. Now, of course, in my case, I've got almost two-thirds of a tank left, so I'm sitting pretty here, but if you're messing around with experimental rockets... Who knows what you'll have? And we really don't want these poor uh, carbonauts to be stuck in space. So here we go, firing up just a little bit of thrust. And not at all. We have plenty of time here. And just watching the speed climb. Remember, the target speed is about 2330. And once we reach that speed, we're going to cut the engines. And that will put us into an orbit, which will be around 50 kilometers up. You can see the light has come on telling me I'm going down. That's not a problem. We'll, we'll be in a slightly eccentric orbit. If you're really OCD about it, you have plenty of fuel to trim your orbit, to adjust it. You know, when you come back down to the... When you come to either the apogee or the perigee, perigee you can uh, thrust, either give yourself more speed or less speed depending upon the position to get your orbit circular. But you really don't need to do very much. In space, small thrust, small amounts of thrust is all you need. You don't need giant boosts unless you're trying to reach escape velocity. With a, you know, two-thirds of a tank of fuel, there is a whole lot of possibilities in terms of orbital maneuvering here. And uh, most importantly, of course, is leaving a bit of fuel so you can actually get back to the surface.